Hey guys, welcome back to What Women Binge. Amanda and I have a wonderful guest in the room today. We have Clea Shira yes! here. And she is from the Home Edit. You might know her from the Home Edit and so many other amazing adventures and entrepreneur and Oh my gosh, what, how many, like, how many adjectives can we take to describe you? Like, fabulous, fashionable, I mean, basically fun. icon. I'll, I'll yeah. take fun, but yeah. I don't know about the others. Oh, I'll fabulous and fashionable, for you're, sure. You're conquering the world. Like, I, go women because of Clea. Nice. That's, that's very, very <laughs> kind. I'm blushing. It's, and you're a bucket list person to have on. Like, oh, since our God, first really? season. Uh, our very first episode, when we were just thinking about a list of who we wanted to have. I, really? I have had you on this list since day one. So I'm so Not glad that, it's working out. I forgot about this. I was moving here in 2020, and one of my very fashionable, very stylish, very, like, interior design friends was like, you're moving to Nashville? You have to meet the Home Edit girls. Oh, my And I was God. like, wait, what? Really? Nashville is, like, like big celebrities. Yes. Just, you're, you guys, like, Nashville is a very cool. the list. Oh, my God. That is so kind and not true. I always <laughs> remind people, you have to remember. Okay. 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 You have Let's... to remember my organizing roots. I organize tampons under a sink. Okay. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I organize what, though? four celebrities. But how many people anymore, want though, right? that? Want that? And, like, need that? And you serve a need for all these people that think you're absolutely fabulous and everyone wants to be able to have the talent that you have. And, and I, I mean, I'm not kidding. When I tell you that I was moving here and like probably three people told me, can you, can you get in touch with the home editor? Can we, oh my God. can you, well, I'm can so we glad we're friends now. Like they, yeah. Welcome they were like, to can you be life. best friends? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad. We'll keep you. We, we were at a dinner together with a bunch of people that I didn't know. And I don't think you knew either. Mm-hmm. It was kind of a, um, hosted by someone to get together. And, uh, we left and I was like, oh my God, are we, can we be friends? <laughs> and then like two days later, we're at the same nail salon, which yes. by the way, I haven't gotten my nails done since then. Oh, which might've been six months ago. I just. <laughs> I just got them done there. I love it. I love you it did? there. Oh, yeah. it's like home. I just well, like roll in in my PJs. Oh, yeah, it's the best. The best. Uh, I haven't done it. And so I've lost touch with like taking care of myself. I feel like the, my nails are something that for some reason, it's just like, it's not even a vanity thing. It's no. like, I don't know. It's it makes comfort. me feel pulled together. Yes, like I have my it. life together when needed, my nails are yes. done. <laughs> but I need it to happen. Like, how come nobody, can we do this? Can mm-hmm. we like maybe collaborate with the home edit and do like a, We'll we'll build a little place that's like, get your hair done, get your waxing done, get your spray tan on, get your nails done. We could do it here. This building I is mean, pretty great. Right? We, could, we, could, yeah. we could turn it into something. I got space. We yeah. could do it. I mean, because I'm like, I am so sick of like, I got to go here and get my, I got to go totally. here and get my Botox. I got to go here and get my nails done. Like, I need like booths. Can, you know what I mean? <gasps> like an antique mall, but for body admin. Yes. yes. And need, you bring everybody in. I need like a, a little chair place. massage person, yeah. right? Maybe reflexology. Yo, this is a Have you been to Luca? No. Oh, oh my Is that the gosh. foot massage place? Yes. yes. But it's more than it's it's reflex reflexology. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Did I say that right? Uh-huh. Um, it is amazing. Right, yeah, I gotta go and there. So you move from they do a massage like you're in this like really comfortable chair with blankets and everything, and they do massage on your shoulders and your feet, and then you move to the chair. Oh. So you really actually get like a great full massage yeah. uh, I mean truly. but in pieces but, but in like important in, but in pieces, pieces important pieces and it's very vibey in there it's yeah, it's like very dark relaxing and, like, and and you don't have to um, get naked no oh, which, yeah. which yeah. to me is actually just it's like a barrier to entry it's the reason why I don't <laughs> swim like I don't want to change you know <laughs> like it's just so not annoying not this girl Melissa's like naked cool let's go <laughs> I just am like it's like one more thing to do yeah you know? I, I agree I, I it's actually why one of the things I hate most about acting is that I have to like when I'm when I'm directing I'm like I don't have to change my clothes today oh, like when I'm acting you don't have actually, to get glam oh, I don't have to wear Spanx I don't have to have mascara in my eyeballs I don't have to wear high heels I don't have to carry the purse but I have so many bags in my purse right now, I have a purse within my purse. Bag and bag. Uh, I have a bag don't and bag. understand this. Bag and bag. Always. I'm always bag and bag. Because the tote holds all my things, my snacks, yeah. my, you know, all oh. of it. And then my bag and bag is what I use to, like, pop out of the car. Not, yes. I mean, in here, okay, I brought yeah. both yeah. bags. Right. But, like, you know, you don't want to be walking around everywhere with, with a giant tote. tote. Yes. Yeah. So that's my thing. I'm always trying to find the right amount of pockets in a mm-hmm. purse, but the right size that it's not too heavy. Oh, you get And I won't load it with too much stuff. Organizer that goes down in the bag, and then you put the other bags that you want to take so out of that's, it in it. So I just did this when you I was need on pockets. the set of this movie. I had yeah, this, you, don't you need ruin pockets. purses you need if you use pockets. Well, here's the problem. <laughs> I, I, I might, like, 
disagree with both of you about that because I just was on set where I brought a purse with me. I have this little tiny one that my husband got me at Chloe for Christmas, mm-hmm. and um, I was very obsessed cute. with it. And it's the it's perfect size for the things I need, mm-hmm. nothing extra. But then I was going to work, and I was like, well, I want to have my iPad with me, and maybe throw the script in it, and like have just a few things that I need to have on set. But this purse is like it's a big leather purse with a zipper down the middle. And then, and it can kind of expand. It's a little like duffelish, mm-hmm. like it feels duffelish. Mm-hmm. But it's got four pockets on the outside. So I had one that had my car keys and room key for my hotel. I had one that had my wallet and money. And then I had one that had my glasses and sunglasses. And then one that was like chapsticks, lipsticks, lotions, but snail fire. But you can have that. Nothing on the inside. Nothing, I had nothing on the, on the inside. inside. <laughs> nothing. You were just so excited about the outside. I was so pouches. excited about the pockets, be able to find stuff like that. Like well, I for could, like a utilitarian purpose like that, sure. Like a travel bag or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it sounds like a carry-on. Yes. Yeah, but I don't want all the—I only want the pockets. Like, can we make a purse that has four pockets on the inside Here's and nothing else? Here's what's going to happen. I actually think I saw something like that on TikTok. <gasps> you have to send this. Okay, I'm going to search it and find—, find I, a woman definitely Also, it. there's a Birkin for that. <laughs> oh. But like she said, too heavy. I need crossbody, too. No, there's— Because like, you introduced me to the real real. Oh, well, wait, hey, I love a deal. So, but You know, also, I was the first employee of the real real. <gasps> Shut up. It started in my living room. Talk to us. Shut on my up. dining room table. I knew I loved you. Oh, my God. I was employee one. Really? And I was there for four years. And then I moved to Nashville right after. But, no yeah, I I was on the ground floor of the real, real. I what was the thinking behind that? that? Like, to, uh, So the, the founder, um, she had... She was a, a dot com person. Mm-hmm. So she had the concept and the idea and the, the, you know, the notion of doing this online because a lot of women that she knew and friends... They they would love to buy something secondhand, but they don't want to go in a store mm-hmm. and go rummaging around. Right. And I think that they and there aren't that many good ones, too. So it's like, you know, they're really hit aren't. or miss. Yeah. And they had this concept of, you know, making a consignment website so that to take away the stigma of mm-hmm. it, to take to make it easy. Again, no barrier to entry mm. um, and to collect only only designer items. So, you know, nothing that you needed to kind of sift through. Okay. Yes. And um, so they had the concept and and the warehouse in, in San Francisco. Um, and I, they needed someone to get into people's closets. So I grew up in LA and I know a few people. Yeah. So um, I was the person to start the actual consignment. And oh um, yeah, and I grew, uh, I mean, obviously Los Angeles was a huge market, but I helped, you know, hire people, other directors around the country. And then I became the director of the West Coast. And um, yeah, and you jumped ship to do your own thing. Well, you know, I loved being in people's closets. I loved organizing them and I loved editing. So af- after the real real, I was like, I think I'm going to start my own business and I want to do the editing and organizing. So oh my gosh, I totally should have called you when I needed to redo my closet. Like I well I have a I have a I have an interesting situation in my closet. She has a sink in her closet. I have a sink in my closet oh. I don't want and I have nowhere to hang it's dre- so long dresses. I still after 3 years of living here I'm like I need to rip out the sink and I need a bar. so I'm like I think I'm just going to go to like you know, Bed Bath and Beyond, and stick a freaking bar up. R. I. P. Hang my <laughs> yeah. R. R. I. P. To Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Overstock. I go to Overstock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm. um, but you, you absolutely can take out one of the short hang and make a long hang stall. Oh, that's true too. But you I can kind of use it all. Oh, use that's it all. Difficult. I know. It's it's the only hard. thing I don't use is the sink. Although I do because I put my makeup on my hand. Like I put my my like uh, uh, what do you call it? Foundation on my hand. My ill makiage foundation. Look at you. I just bought ill makiage. What oh, do we think so about good. it? It's is so it? good. Yeah, and I've been okay. doing like the little ads for them here and there, and people. Okay. I have gotten more people texting me. How is it? Is Tell it me the truth. And I'm like, oh, it? no. Like, all of my makeup is now Il Maquillage. All of my face products are Il Maquillage. Now. I, I love, love the, um, they have this, like, gel. The Power Lift is the Il Maquillage. The I'm blue, yes. um, like, and the, it's got a little magnet You've been getting yeah. out on me. Oh, well, it, the, you haven't the seen my ads, little scooper sits right on top. Of the I'm your best friend. I shouldn't have to see the ads. Not only that, the li- the chapstick. I feel betrayed. The, oh, chapstick the chapstick is, like, a little tiny, beautiful little white glass case and you untwist it but the the little um lip brush or it's Mm -hmm. not really a brush it's like a little pad is magnetic and sits on the top too so So smart i love little chapstick on i love beautiful things that are smart yeah and it's and uh the power lift is very lovely you can wear it as a serum sorry i'm like i can give you the whole picture i I love it you can do it as a serum not sponsored but you can reach out to us (laughs) um it, it feels good 
putting it on. It does. You know? Yeah. And you can wear it, like, it, it works as two things. Like, I always put it on, it's underneath my makeup right now, but I also use it at night before I go to bed. So, oh, you can use it as a serum, it or you can use it as, like, a pre-makeup preparation. Thing. Hey, Amanda, you know how we always give our guests really great socks? Yes. Well, I just found some new socks, and I think you did, too. Dr. Motion. I, I love Dr. Motion socks. Dr. Motion socks are awesome. Here's the crazy thing about Dr. Motion. It's a wellness brand. It's a wellness brand, but for your feet. And well, and it benefits all parts of your body, really. They have mild compression socks, which are ankle length to knee high. They're smooth. They're reinforced toe for optimal comfort and durability, which is great. Uh, I wore them on a hike this week. And let me tell you, girls' feet held up. Yes, and good. the compression tights are awesome for being on the airplane. They help me with circulation and... You know, they just, they just hurt, but they're cute too. When you think of compression socks, you don't always think cute, but I got compliments on mine and yours have tiny mushrooms. Mine have tiny mushrooms because we're in a mushroom phase right now. And <laughs> there's mushrooms are hot and I like my mushroom socks and the graduated compression tights have full leg support to reduce leg fatigue. Yes. And for our diabetic customers, they have the most comfortable diabetic socks. They are non-compression and they've been designed specifically to keep the needs of diabetics in mind. So there's no binding lycra and the graduated cuff allows maximum stretch. And look, no matter your age or gender, whether you're a nurse, a mother, a teacher, a traveler, an athlete, someone who stands all day, someone who sits all day, they're great for everybody. And the spring summer collection just launched on the website. So go check it out. Have fashionable, comfortable, healthy feet. All you got to do is go to drmotionsocks.com and check out the products and explore the whole new collection. And it's Dr. D-R Motion Socks. D-R-M-O-T-I-O-N-S-O-C-K-S dot com. Check it out. Explore the new collection. Oh, so I use my, so I, I pump the Il Maquillage Foundation on my hand, like, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. do. And then I use Should the I brush. Why, why, why I, uh, I do that to then, then I put it on. Oh, so you need sort of one of those little, I know I need a palette. Like a palette. Yeah, I, I just, just thought of that the other day. I put it right on my um, on the brush. On the brush. That's what I do. Oh, you do? That? Is that bad? Or I put it like a dot on my finger and just. Yeah, I and think then, I used to do something like that, like smear it around my face. But I just like, I don't know. I, 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 I am not great with makeup. I need to watch some more TikToks or talk to my daughter. I get my makeup done all the time and I don't, I still don't really feel like I know how to do it properly. I found the greatest thing that I think I've found in a long time makeup wise the other day by accident because I went in for something bougie and came out with a $5 mascara that y'all so what, yeah, what is good. it? She's love. Yeah. It's there this is. Essence brand. Oh. I, I went. Okay. So I got some new perfume recently. It was Chanel and I love it. And you know, they always send samples when you order stuff. So they sent me a mascara sample and I was like, oh, I'll try this. I need a new mascara anyway. Loved it. Wanted the waterproof version of it because I'm a crier. Oh, I can't do waterproof. And. It won't come off. Yeah. This one was, I mean, it was not waterproof, but it was easy to get off. I don't, I hadn't tried the actual waterproof yet, but they were out of it. And I was like, Ugh, what am I going to do now? Right. I'm just, and you I guess. And found one. So I was literally, you know, in the checkout line where they have all the tiny things. Oh. Love the tiny the things. Tiny things. Size, That's, impulse It's the best. It's the best. It's the best. They all speak to me. Guys, I and was at, at home the other day and I was like, I'm busting through here. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Yeah. I'm not looking. <laughs> right. The the little things, they they look cuter. They, oh. I just, I love I them. love a tiny thing. <laughs> and so, but this <laughs> is actually not a tiny thing. Somebody had like just set it down, but it was like a double pack of like the regular mascara and the waterproof and the same thing. And it was like oh. less than $10 for both. Wow. And the picture on the back, I was comparing it to like the other kind of higher end brands. And I liked the way the picture looked better. And I was like, well, for $8.99 or something, I'm try it. Well, why not? Yeah. Why not? If yeah. I hate it, I'll give it to my 13 year old niece, you know? There like, you go. yeah. My uh, daughter um, tells me, she's the one who tells me what kind of makeup I need. Oh, and she will actually go to yes. Sephora and buy it for me. I, oh, Wait, so this whole thing, so your daughter's almost 13, you said? She will be 13 on Monday. So she is she, basically, a, she is a teenager. What do they call them, the now. Sephora girls now? Oh, yeah. Is this a thing? They, oh, is she one it of is these? a thing. She's a Sephora and Ulta. She will hit up mm -hmm. both okay. in one mall visit. That's, okay. I, yeah. me, I don't know what is left to buy. Like, she yeah. owns it all. Oh, 
TikTok will come up with something every day. Oh, I, I, I take my niece and I'm like, you have 30 minutes and $100 and we are getting saying? out of here. I will hundred dollars. Well, I don't do that often. Well, you're a but, nice, nice aunt. Well, <laughs> first of all, also I worked at the Real Real, but I also worked at Hermes when I lived in New York. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she fancy. I, <laughs> she moves, not me. I, I was. This is from Target. So those are my fancy days. But t- when you work at Hermes, you can't afford to buy. Hermes, no. So I just want to be very clear about that. <laughs> no, it, no, no, no. You're still a sales associate. Yeah. No, I was. I, I worked in the corporate office. Okay. Well, but. Different. Still, still. It, sales associates actually, I'm sure they make commission. They could probably afford. Maybe they can. Yeah. Yeah. They, it's the the low level people. I in think corporate. of my days in retail, and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. I was doing good to like. I think my dream bag when I worked in retail was like a coach, like a little wristlet. I worked mm. a coach too. <laughs> I love coach. I was. Obsessed you guys, with I've coach. had a lot of jobs. You really have. That's I have. great though. Well, I, how old are you? are Not that old. No, forty two. How did you have um, this many jobs? Because I went to college in New York and I worked. The entire time. Oh, you went to Parsons. I went to Parsons. I read that. I and love that networking is that, I, that I took one art class at Parsons. I thought I could paint. I can't. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of art students can't paint. So um that's why I I uh, majored in business. That would so I worked always on the business side of fashion. That's I lived amazing. right down the street. I was on Sixth Avenue and Tenth Street. And oh. so I would just like take my big what's it called? Poof portfolio. Portfolio. Uh-huh. Did you have the big black I, I yeah. with the you guys, I won't get rid of it. Oh my god. I painted people like faces and naked people and all Oh yeah, you know, I did all, all the things. I loved figure study class. I was bad at I was bad at I have I'm a not a terrible an artist. story about figure figure study class. Would you like to hear this? Yeah. So this one time, I mean, I was used to like, I went to Watkins here in Nashville before I transferred into Franklin at Omore, which is now Belmont. Oh. Um, And so my figure study class, we had this one, she was lovely. I believe she was Russian or Ukrainian. She didn't, English was not her first language. And she was maybe about 70 something years old. Hmm. And she was our usual model. Oh. Oh. And I loved her. So one day, I mean, we all got used to her. She was very fun and very com- maybe too comfortable around all of us. <laughs> um, so one day we come in expecting it to be her, and we walk in, and there's like this young, maybe twenty years old dude. Oh my! <laughs> and y'all, it is. Was everyone blushing? Okay. It, it, <laughs> Yes, but at the same time, it was like, okay, we're professionals here. We're all going to be artists. We've all seen naked bodies. It's no big deal. Except for the fact that you see all of him. Yes. And that day, his prop was this large ladder. Guys, my daughter's calling. Oh, you talk about. I'm, she I, need to. No, I'm talk? sure she's at Sephora. Hold oh. on. Let, me, let me just <laughs> quickly. Ahead. Hold on. Let's find out. Hi, Stell. Why do you need to ma- have math tutoring today? <laughs> because you need to get an A in math. That's why. Okay, honey, I love you. I'm literally recording a podcast right now, and I'm talking about all the makeup. No, but mommy, mommy, mommy. But <laughs> this is the most relatable content we've ever had. It's not a waste of your time, honey. Tutoring is is important, and you can practice. No, ma- no, it's me out, all right, though. Stella, I I love you so much. This is all gonna. No, 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 no. Why can't you call daddy? <laughs> Oh, she just hung up on me. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of, it made me feel the most so perfect much. 13 Wait, I have Clea, ever heard. I can't even tell you how much that makes me feel better about the fact that I get hung up on by my teenagers oh. all the time. It's really, they don't say goodbye. No. No, they just, they're just, mad because they they want to get mad. The only reason they call is because they're mad at you. Right, Otherwise, they, they would text or just <laughs> ignore you. It's either they're mad or they want something. Okay. Yeah. Literally tying bricks to all yes. my children's heads. They're not allowed to turn into teenagers. No, you don't even understand. I won't it's allow like, it. It's it pretty, gets real. It's pretty rough. I got I gotta say, are you experiencing with thirteen? The my sister has a thirteen year old, and she has reverted to like toddlerhood in that she's clingy, like a little koala, mm. like does not leave her side. Is constantly in her business. Like you look up, we're like having an adult conversation. She's like, oh, oh really? That is real. Like standing right there. Oh my god, I, I cannot say a word without her clocking it and like what what do you mean by that what wh- who are you talking about what is i really we've been trying to get her history grade up and i keep joking to my husband that we just need to gossip about thomas jefferson and <laughs> Stella will be like on it oh do you try know that that's like, actually yeah, brilliant like, i have to be like did you, Can you hear what george washington because that's policy? brilliant yeah no i mean that's that's really i mean tricking your kids like i just tricked my 11 year old into doing chorus because i convinced him that he was because I got something that said all fourth graders are being invited to chorus. And I was like, Tucker, they invited you to chorus. And he goes, they did. 
I was like, yeah. He goes, I said, did you, do you want to do that? Should we say yes? And he's like, well, if they ask, if then they we ask. should do it. Oh, I love that. <gasps> and I was like, great. Now he thinks he's so something special. He's like, you know, I'm part of chorus. Right, that, right. Only with like was, four other people that said yes. Right. Because <laughs> he doesn't really invitation. Yes. Chorus invitation. Oh my I gosh. wish I had thought of this for like my 18 year old with like. Oh, I was telling you about ladder balls. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, ladder balls. So, <laughs> great. Ladder yes, balls. let's go it there. Uh, <laughs> Y'all, so it's this ladder set up in the middle of the oh. art room. Ugh. And he's standing there and no one's thinking anything of it. He gets into his first pose. And we all, like, have set up our easels, and we turn back around to look at him. And it's, like, they're resting on the ladder. And not only are they (laughs) resting on the ladder, they're so long. (laughs) (laughs) But they're, like, they're down a step. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Do you have a drawing of this? I do. (laughs) Can we please see it? I think you need to (laughs) to show it. How do we see this? Droopy ladder balls is the worst thing I've ever heard. Well, Instagram shut that down if you post it. I don't know. I don't know what what the rules. His face isn't showing, obviously, because my, of course, my view, y'all, is legit. Oh my gosh! It's behind the ladder. Oh, oh my gosh! So you can <laughs> oh you see the back of the ball. I feel like we need to like Logan needs to somehow splice that in like really quickly. Like you don't know what like you're seeing yeah. into like YouTube where it's so quick oh, that you God. don't know I mean, that you're seeing. It's a drawing. It's art. It's a tasteful nude. It's very. It's, it's just got character. I just. I hope it's. I hope it's accurate. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm nothing if not. Uh, <laughs> Detail? Detail or yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Draft right. person. Wow. <laughs> wow. Anyway, away from the ladder balls. But yeah. um <laughs> Glad we, Stella interrupted that <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where is she? Um, oh my wait, gosh. tell us. Okay, so the home edit, how did that start? Okay. So um, like I said, I moved to Nashville. I didn't have a job. I left my job in Los Angeles. We moved for my husband's uh, career. He's a photographer and he works okay. a lot with musicians. Not just a photographer, like incredibly well-known photographer. He he has had some success. Yes, just, he's had some success. So um, the only reason, John gets a lot of street cred in our house because he shoots Taylor Swift. Oh. So, oh he well. would be a god in my house. He yes. has... Stella has been to many shows on the Eras tour. She's been within, you know, one foot away from Did Taylor. She, cry? she cried for four hours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she cried for she cried for four hours. That would be Golda. Golda would be like, I don't know what this emotion is. Yeah. That is that was hard for her. My eleven year old loved her until he, she ruined football, he said. So. Oh. <laughs> See, I think she made it great. I, I exactly. love football now. I agree. I'm I have no huge, problem with it. But she he all fan. of a sudden was like She's just making the Chiefs win, and I don't like the Chiefs. Not, and like, I, <laughs> well, and then people said she was making them lose mm-hmm. for a while. So. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen her in a uniform yet, so I'm not sure what the problem exactly, is. Exactly, that's true. And I'm I'm a curse. I can't wear people's uniform. Like I've had players ask me, like, oh, if I if we win this, if I win this bet or something, will you wear my jersey? It's like you don't want me to wear your jersey. Yeah, you when I wear it. someone's jersey, it is like career ending injury. Oh my god! Like the, that game. Hey, Amanda, I am heading on a girls' trip tomorrow. And first of all, I'm so sorry that I'm not bringing you. because <laughs> That's have, okay. We would have a blast. But I'm so excited because you know what I'm bringing with me? What? I'm bringing my pear eyewear. You know why? Because I want to be reading on the beach, but I also want to snap on the front frames, the, the sunshades. And well, can you can that. have them in every color that you want to match all of your swimsuits and all of your resort wear. Exactly. I'm bringing bright pinks and ombres and all kinds of fun colors. Are you just bringing your sun tops or do you have your readers and blue blockers too? I'm bringing all of them. I have my blue <laughs> blockers in my readers and I will snap on my sun tops and it's awesome. And it's also awesome because you get infinite possibilities and it starts at just $60, including your prescription. And with their sun top collection, you can protect your eyes and style without paying extra for prescription sunglasses. It is awesome. And plus you get 15% off by using the code binge at pareyewear.com. You can browse the top frames and see all the different designs, collections. You can figure out so many different ways to just make your glasses part of your look. You know what my favorite thing about the pair I wear website is, though? The virtual try-on. Because I thought, I only look good in one style of glasses. But until I went on Pear's website and tried them on for myself, I now have two different styles of pair frames, plus all the toppers to go with them. I just snap on my style each day. It's so good. Yeah, so you can step into the spring sunshine with a snap. Sun top frames start at just $30. And they're wide frames to fit every face. They have new designs that drop every month, including fun collabs. And you get free standard shipping and a flexible 30-day return policy if you 
for some reason don't like it, which yes. there's no way you're not going to like this. So one pair, infinite possibilities. Go to PairEyewear.com and use Binge, B-I-N-G-E, for 15% off your first pair. And support the show by mentioning that What Women Binge sent you in your post-checkout survey. That's Pair, P-A-I-R, Eyewear.com, code Binge. Hang on. Wow. It's happened like four times. We have times. to get back to how. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. Please. Sorry. Okay. This is about you. So we moved to Nashville. Um, I was honestly just having like a bad day in LA and my husband asked like if I would consider it. And I was like, let's go. I was like, uh, that's fine. Let's just do it. And I don't know what idiot does that. Don't, like, don't <laughs> do as I do. But uh, you sight unseen, had never been here. Just oh, wow. picked up and moved. Um, and I was like born and raised in LA. Yeah. So it was like a big deal for me to leave. My parents, my brother, everyone, they were like, what? What You're... year is this? Um, that was in 2015. Okay. So um, we moved here. I had no friends. I knew zero people. And I met a friend on Instagram, which is like what you do. You have mm -hmm. to friend date, you know, you online oh, friend that's dates. the worst. Yes. That's how I became friends with some of my friends here. Yeah. yeah. You move to DMs and then you're like, <laughs> do you want to get brunch? <laughs> like you pass a phone number. So um, anyway, I told her that I wanted to start an organizing company. And she said, well, I actually have a really good friend who had one in San Francisco and wants to re-up it in Nashville. And I was like, that sounds like a perfect situation. Oh, yeah. my God. And she pitched the same thing to Joanna and Joanna was like absolutely not like I, <laughs> like I don't need a business partner and I she had already done it herself a friend. yeah she had done I it don't herself need a friend I, yeah I've heard that wow yeah my friends in Connecticut are always like my dance card's full yeah exactly like no new friends is is her motto uh, actually that's <laughs> and, funny and I'm so the opposite like oh, you know, know Melissa and I went to dinner and I'm like will you be my friend yeah you know? and I was like, like yeah and we I, see each other at nails we talk for like yeah. 20 minutes they're like can we do your nails now so right I like pick up friends everywhere I go like we're friends now and uh, yeah. Joanna is not that way um but I did talk her into having lunch so we sat down four hours later we just got up as business partners and wow. we started the company that day um like within eight hours start to finish we got our oh. social handles we came up with our so name you figured we out the name logo wow. oh we did it That's all we got our deal. website domain we started our legal paperwork like what? when i tell you we started the company that day i mean like Legitimately. Legitimately. Wow. That's like us on this podcast. I know. Want to do a podcast? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Where do we do it? Right yeah. here. What should it look like? Here, I'll decorate it by next week. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're impulsive is, um, you know, not not the best word, but that is what happened in this nanny. Case. It's like, yes. well, it goes back to this, like, when when you know, you know. Yes. Right? Yeah, we, you know, and it's a good thing because we didn't Google each other. We had, like, no, <laughs> like, there was no you background time. check. Yeah, no. There, <laughs> we, um, and we, like, have more bank accounts together than we have with our husbands. So. That's hilarious. That's yes. pretty great. So I'm glad it worked That's out. Real That's real amazing. Yeah. So, and now you guys are, not only have your product line at Walmart, you also have a deal with Hello Sunshine, right? Or, your, or Hello, Hello Sunshine. Sunshine Acquired us. Acquired. You. So in 2022, um, Hello Sunshine acquired the Home Edit, and with that, you know we the, we have a lot of divisions of the company. We have our organizing services, which is where Joanna and I started. Mm -hmm. um, that was what the company was. Is that we, nationwide? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so that was the idea that we came up with. The Home Edit was an organizing company, in-home organizing services, and Joanna and I would show up with our shirts that said the Home Edit, and we organized tampons under the sink. That I love is, it. I love that it. is what we do. And then we started doing it for celebrities, and we kind of gained our notoriety and social following um, that way. Honestly. And one of the big ones was Reese Witherspoon's costume closet, right? Yes. So See, when I moved here, my friend told me I needed to find you guys. It's because she knew I had a huge costume closet. But I was like, but they already did hers. They won't do mine, too. We, like We do all sorts of closets. We, st uh, Joanne and I don't show up at people's homes anymore, but we do um, when we film TV. The show. Yeah. yeah, when we film our shows. Um, so yeah, so we'd started as organizing services, then it turned into also having a product line. It's at the container store and we have a separate one at Walmart oh, okay. and we put out our first book. We're now working on book number, we're, we're releasing book number four soon. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, then they turned into New York times bestsellers and that was really exciting because who knew, um, that we could write a book. I just like, sat down I, I wrote it like word, you did I, I sure did and I took wow. every photo in the book what yeah That's book a lot one of work. book one book two I also wrote and shot book three we worked with someone I was in um, cancer treatment at the time and uh, so I did the revisions on that book but we worked as a team on on that one and then book four 
is so exciting. I can't tell you guys about it yet. Can you tell the name or no? Has has it not been announced? I think it's announcing next week. Okay. Well, I want to, we have to get into what you binge, but I want to hear a little bit about your cancer story. If you would share some of it. I know that you have been very public about it. Yeah. I came from uh, a radiation uh, checkup today. Oh, really? Yeah. That's where I came from. So where are you? If you can. Yeah, no, I, um, I celebrated being cancer free November 22nd of 22. Um, And uh, so I had my one year anniversary a few months ago. Thank you. Um, I have, so I was diagnosed with breast cancer on March 8th of 2022, okay. um, and, uh, went through chemo radiation, um, and my cancer, I'm hormone positive. And for people who don't know what that means, it means that, um, I'm, my doctor's going to call me and be like, you did not explain this correctly, but, um, <laughs> well, I don't know anything yeah, about it. So it's, uh, it means that the, the cancer like feeds from my hormones. Uh-huh. So they have, it's hormone receptor positive, which is like, what does that mean even? But it's estrogen and progesterone. Basically I need to shut that production down in my body. Mm-hmm so that the cancer doesn't feed on it and grow back. So I have a high risk of reoccurrence and my cancer was, the pathology came back that it was really aggressive and fast moving. So what I have to do now to keep cancer at bay is I'm on um, a hormone therapy. I take an oral chemo uh, and um, a monthly injection for the next 10 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Does it make you sick? Is it have bad side effects? It's the, the oral chemo is not the best. I yeah. carry around Zofran. Oh, a, really? A lot. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to Zofran. Yeah. Zofran right. and Il Maquillage. Yeah. Yes. I, um, it really <laughs> is. Brought to you by. One for the inside, one for the outside. It is seriously a miracle. Like, I, I, <laughs> this is so silly because it's like I battled cancer, but my biggest fear was throwing up. Oh, that oh, is no. a I'm right there with no, you. No, I have a metaphobia. I haven't thrown up since I was 10. I don't think I have either. Like you, I, no, I did once when I was pregnant in From throwing up. Yes. Yeah. I wow. Just, I, I was able to do that when I was a kid. I used That's to lay amazing. on the floor in my bathroom by yes. the toilet and be so afraid I was going to vomit I, I, that I would I lay there and try now. to calm myself. I do that now. And there's something about laying on the bathroom floor. Yeah. That, that cold floor. Yeah. Feels yes. better. But I legitimately was so panicked when I found out about chemo. I was like, okay, fine. I'll lose my hair. I'll be bald. Yeah. But I don't want to throw I up. Won't, <laughs> I won't barf. Yeah. So the Zofran really helps. Yes. And I also carry around. <laughs> for everyone listening, uh, Compazine, which is for breakthrough um, nausea. So it's like it's like Advil and Tylenol. Like, you know, okay. Advil, you can only take every like eight hours. Right. So you can take Tylenol at four hours yeah. or something. It's like that. Oh, that's interesting. So, um, but I didn't I'm, know about I'm all that. She's doing prepared. well. I yeah, I'm prepared. I, but yeah, prepared. sounds like you're doing great. And you're, I am. And do you are you very active in like talking to people about? Yes. You know, getting checked and all those. Yes. Things. Yeah. Um, What's your best advice on that? Like. I still don't think I know how to do a proper self-check. Well, I'm actually writing my cancer memoir right mm. now. Um, I'm almost done with it. And um, I do have a whole section on resources for how to do self-exams. It's really important. The most important thing you can do, forget about if it's right or wrong. It's to just do it frequently so okay. you know your baseline. Okay. Like, I don't care if you're just poking around. You know, it's like it doesn't. Sure, like there are certain things that you should be doing correctly, but the most important thing is if you feel something off, you only would know that if you're doing it okay. regularly. Right. So feel yourself up pretty often. I, that's what I did, and I found my own tumor. God, really? I was about to ask, you so did. you found your own. Wow. I found my own tumors. I had two large ones, and um, and then a bunch of microscopic ones. And the reason why I needed chemo and radiation is because I found it too late and it had already spread to my lymph nodes. Oh, so it was in my okay. lymphatic system. Had I done a proper check before okay. earlier, I could have probably avoided. And you were young. You were like, you hadn't gotten a mammogram at this I point, I was right? 39. So, so had you had a mammogram yet? I had not. And well, I was 39 when I first felt my tumors. I had turned 40 and was like, well, wait a minute. What? Is that Sure, breasts are lumpy, but that feels what like different. Why would, why wouldn't it be? You know, at 40, I asked if I could get a mammogram and they were like, oh, do you want one? And I was like, yes, please. And they were like, okay. But then when I went in, the technician said, you probably should have had one at 35 and then waited until 40. I've had yes. two or three now. It would have saved me. She's in her late 30s. It yeah. would have saved me if I had done it in my 30s. Yeah. But let me tell you, when I found my lumps, I called my OB. I got out of the shower. I was in New York doing press. 
Um, and I got out of the shower like shaking because that was the realization where I was like, wait, these lumps oh, feel like lumps. No. So I called my OB. I asked for a mammogram. I said that I had lumps and they uh, wouldn't see me. They wouldn't get me in. What? So they said um, our books, this was February, our books are closed, like they're full, everything's booked, and the May book isn't open yet. So you're just going to have to try again. What? Try back. No. Uh, so uh. I, yeah, it was, it was pretty shocking. Like, you know, it, it's like you call your doctor, there's a difference between getting an annual checkup and having the flu. You know, yeah. they get you in, they see you. Yeah. Uh, I thought that there would be like a, a red phone for like uh, yeah. when someone calls for a yeah. lot. Like do you there think might they, be cancer in my body. Yeah. Hello. Do you think they get too, they think that they get too many false alarms and they're like, they don't want Maybe, like, but, of hypochondriacs or something like that? But like, I mean, I yeah, just that's can't not right. imagine. That's not right. I said to the to the uh, woman who answered the phone, I was like, is this the way the medical system works? Like, how how is this OK? I like, want to be checked today. Yeah. And she was she was like, you know, yeah, I, I, I know, sweetheart. But I mean, I just told my dermatologist. Call me sweetheart. I, I one called more time. <laughs> I'm come through yeah. the phone. I, I, my husband said he saw something on the back of my ear that looked funny. And I was like. Uh, I panicked, but I was out of town. And so as soon as I got back, I called my dermatologist. I said, can I get in and see? And they were like, yeah, what do you, you just had a checkup. I was like, yeah, you know, there's something on the back of my ear. And they're like, we'll see you Monday. Right. So exactly. I'm going on Monday. To exactly. Well, and when I, I mean, I switched, um, OB and uh, gynecologist. <laughs> yes, I hope you did. Mine yeah. retired, and so I had to have a new one. I went to my new one, and he didn't really have my history or anything, and so we were talking through it, and I was like, well, I've got these two lumps that I've had checked before, and everything's fine, and he was like, yeah, we're going to do that again. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And so, like, within the next 24 hours, I had another mammogram and an ultrasound and ruled See, everything See, now, out. I have a problem. Well, this is a side note. Well, I got my mammogram that led immediately to an ultrasound. So the, they won't do it for me here in this state. Oh, the Back radiologist. Back in Connecticut, I was getting them at the same exact time. I would do one and then the other because I had dense tissue. So it was right. recommended mm -hmm. that I always do both at the mm -hmm. same time. Here in Tennessee, they're like, you can get the mammogram, but I we don't see a, a need for the times. ultrasound. They you, won't. Nobody will let me. No. You need to go to Vanderbilt. Okay. Good to know. I, yeah, because they won't let, they're like, nah, you don't need it. If the doctor no. says you do, I'm like, but everyone else always said I did. No, so. I, I got my mammogram ultrasound. And then when they read the, the radiologist came to look at the, um, the ultrasound and, uh, she was like, there are some very concerning mm. lumps or she said they're, they're, yeah, they're concerning. And I was like, well, can you tell me like, are, are they cancerous? And she said, they're concerning and they need to be biopsied. And I was like, oh, well, I'm like actually going out of town for spring break. So and she was like, I don't think you understand. Like you can't leave You're this building leaving. without oh. getting a biopsy. Oh, you went same day. Oh, yeah. Wow. Now that's the kind of service. So she want, knew. First of all, she knew. Yeah. And then when I walked in for the biopsy, they there was knew. a different radiologist. And I've, I'm just going to like keep asking people until someone tells, tells me, me definitively. Yeah. And I said, um, could it be anything else? And she said, honey, you have cancer. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> My husband um, was in the waiting room for this whole time. It took like six hours because I just kept having to move from yeah. one room like, to yeah. another room. And it was a breast center, so he couldn't go back yeah. with me. And he was panicking, and I was panicking. And, oh. and um, But, you know, here I am. Here so you are. Saved my life. Helping other people get yes. checked when they're supposed to get checked. Well, that's the best. Thing. If you follow her on Instagram, that's my favorite because I feel like I I feel like we're already friends because I yeah. watch your stuff every single day. But I have loved and we've been stalking how you, you have advocated for women through this whole process and how you have been transparent about your journey and how it's not been easy. It's It was my... The, the, as soon as I got over the shock, I was like, I'm going to make my cancer purposeful and I am going to share every minute of it mm -hmm. so that if I can help That's save great. someone else's yeah. life and get checked sooner. I mean, you know, I, I wish I had done it for myself. Well, up until recently, there weren't really examples of women going through this that unless it was in your own family that you I feel like. You know, we didn't talk about this. No. Well, that's another thing that I one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it, because I don't have the BRCA gene. I okay. have no history of female cancer in my family. Like I was 39 when yeah. my tumors formed. I mean, it it was not like a probable thing for yeah. me to have cancer, which is why when I first felt something, I was like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah, that that's not right. You right. Know? And finally, when I turned 40 and felt it, I was like, oh, Wait, yeah. like it was a mammogram was on my mind. That's right. the only reason why it clicked. Yeah. And so I'm just. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yes. 
Um, all right. We have to ask you these questions. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Is there a movie you feel you should have watched, but you haven't yet? <laughs> Goonies. I know. It's Do you know we shock. had Sean Astin on last week? It's it's a shock. And now I'm like, am I too old? No. no. And your kid, you have a 10 year old, oh, right? Oh, it's the perfect age. Yeah, perfect age. He will age. love it. A uh, shock. I was at a bar once in LA and it was like one of those like uh, hipster bars in like downtown and they were playing like old movies on the screen. And I looked up and I was like, what movie are they playing to John? And everyone in the bar looked at me like, I was Are you crazy. Uh, like Psychopath. everyone that was in that movie became a big star because of it. But um, no, but the cool thing about Goonies is I feel like you'll get a lot of pop culture as soon as you watch it. Right. Yes. You're I like, could, oh, that's you know what? what that means. So I that's have been, who Chunk is. I've been playing <laughs> along with everyone for years that yes, I so had you know. seen it. Like, because it was too embarrassing to say that I hadn't. So I was like, yeah, you know, for everything. <laughs> well, the last and, guy to tell Sean Astin I'd never seen Lord of the Rings. I mean, he. He knew, but we you know, publicly had to say either. it. Yeah, and I was like, it's just oh. terrible to, set, to tell your friend that. I'm a, I'm a Harry Potter movie. girl, not Lord of the Rings. Well, See, that's, that's okay. I feel like I'm a little more, I think that's the you thing. Get, you get a pick. I, yeah. I believe that's the rule. Okay, okay. You get Maybe the it's the beards. Don't the Lord of the Rings, they have a lot more beards. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of body hair. In there's a lot of hair. Yeah, and they're, they're like the hobbits have weird feet, right? Not, oh, not yeah, cool they do. With that. I mean, I've got my mushroom socks on today. They're my adorable. Motion, yeah, my com- compression socks. That is a sponsor. My mushroom. Yeah, this is a sponsor. <laughs> um, okay, is there a TV villain you love to hate? A TV villain? It doesn't have to be TV. It could be movie. It could be or movie. Book. Um, God, a TV villain that I love to hate. I don't know. Do you guys have one? Like Dr. House from House, maybe? I haven't seen But it. he's not the villain. He's actually the hero, but he's like an anti-hero. Um, what is, is it like, like, maybe like a... Like a housewife, like a real. Oh housewife. yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel like, and I don't, I don't want to say because I have dreams of being friends with all of them. So I don't want <laughs> to. They might don't love that you tell her name. Sometimes they want to be. Is That's it Garcelle? True. Just kidding. No, no, <laughs> she's a friend. I was like, I can get you in touch with her. Yeah, no, I. You guys, is it you don't the Salt Lake City it. cast? You don't have to say it. It's it's a it's a New York oh, New York cast. cast it's, member. it's an old New York cast member. Is so it maybe, Bethany? Okay. Oh, you love yeah. the hater. I love it. But, but I mean, I love to she, hate the she Kardashians. She wouldn't care. She'd be like, you can hate me. I know. But I do think we'd be friends. I think, he, yeah. I, I could see. I so think she'd be would like all of us. If nothing else. And and I am on Bethany's beauty journey on TikTok. <gasps> I she reviews it. beauty products. Really? She tells you if it's worth the money she or not. Prison? No. No, that's, oh, okay. that's a different that's one. A different oh, that's not her? Okay. Mm-hmm. No. She had a talk show, right? I was on her talk show. Yeah. Oh, Therese is in prison. She's still in prison? No. Oh, uh, that's a good question. I don't think so. Hey, Siri. I, maybe she's with Kate Middleton. Is yeah. Teresa, how do you say her last name? Judice. Judice still in prison? It is? That's how you say it? I think. I always wanted to say like Guidice because it's like they're no, Italian, No, she's right? been out since 2015. Oh, 2015? <gasps> that's what it says. But I think she's swapped with her husband. <laughs> yeah, her husband's in or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your favorite book genre? Oh, 1000% a thriller. I love oh. I love a high body count. I love a murder. It needs it need, if it doesn't have murder in it, I'm not reading like, it. Like what would be like an author or a book? Okay, I can tell you that this is what I binge more than TV. I binge books. I like read a book a week. Ooh, Frida McFadden. I can tear through her books. I can be done in two days. They are really? so good. And the thing that I love about them and she has a lot, which it's like when you get into a, a show that has a lot of seasons or yeah. something. It's like really fun because you just get to like rip through all these books. Um, but I, so many of the thriller authors that I read, it's like you kind of end up guessing what's yeah. going to happen, you know? And but that's with, the nice part with it. Frida. It's there's always like I I get it wrong almost all the time, and I love that. Ooh, I twisty. love that was me that with Game of twisty. Thrones. Like Game of Thrones was always twisty. You never, never know who's gonna. Nobody's safe. Oh, it's so good. I I mean, not I didn't want to. I didn't want to, but I had to. I I ended up going there. I was by myself for a little while. My family was talking like gibberish. I didn't understand anything they were saying when they were talking about this, and I was like, "Well, I'm by myself for a while. Maybe I'll dive in." And by episode like four, three or something, everything shifts and you're like, wait, what? So, okay, so I need to watch Game of Thrones. Yeah, I you gotta like, get like four or five episodes in and then you'll be like, confusing oh. to me. I feel like everyone's name like Dionysus. You do have to, <laughs> you, well, they and they all, all have Olsen's. numerous names. Like Khaleesi is the queen of the, like, I mean, they've, she, they've got these like long drawn out names, but you hear them enough that you learn and then the, you find the families. I mean, I did a whole like, 
She basically could draw out the family tree. Yeah. And you, oh. you kind of have to in order to understand it and see a map of where everyone lives. Interesting. But then I did like a bracket for the last episode like to figure out me and my family were like in on who, what, how, what's going to oh. happen. Like who's actually dead, who's not dead, who's alive. Who's... Oh, so there are murders. I would like yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. no. It sounds like it's up your alley if you yeah. like. It's, there's a, oh, no, nobody's safe. And yeah. it's brutal. Okay. If you like fantasy at all, werewolf novels are full of murder. She's all about that. I, um, romance. I don't like fantasy in my mind, but then I end up loving certain things. And I'm like, oh, I guess that would be in that genre. I got sucked yeah. in thanks to Instagram ads. Yeah. And now I'll I'm do it every obsessed. time. It'll it's do it every time. Um, do you have a go to karaoke song? Uh, no one needs to listen to my voice. I just will say that. Um, but I do like, um, oh God, what is the name by Sugar Hill Gang? Oh, hip, hop, we have the brain. Hip, 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 oh, hip, yeah. Hip, hop, oh, yes. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, I love that song. It used to be my friends and I in New York. If we could sing the lyrics to that, we were still sober. Yeah. Oh, and really? That, that was our test. Time for, for another drunk drink. We, were. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can still do it. Time yeah, for another going. drink. Still got it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what is there? A, is there a re- reboot that you liked better than the original? <laughs> well, we are the new hosts of the reboot of Extreme Home Makeover, so it, it's very exciting. Yeah, and um, so I guess I like that reboot. Do you want to make over my sink in my closet? <laughs> It's all I, I, don't it's think all I really you have need. A need. I just need I'm the sink sure. ripped out and a bar put in. I know, but I think they help. But I want people to look with pretty. Needs. Oh, okay. I just <laughs> it really is want- very exciting to scream, move that bus. Yes, I. That, yes. Oh my god! If you I need remember a guest, the original one. If you need a guest helper for the bus moving, I'll drive the bus. I don't care. <laughs> um, what was your first concert? Um, my first concert was Counting Crows. Oh, mm-hmm. that's a good one. Yeah, I like that. I, th- I paused because it's possible that my first concert was Tom Petty. Also, also one, great, great, though. and kind of in the same genre, and like, both kind of at the feel- Hollywood Bowl. That's why I'm like, really? Yeah, yeah. Morning. But which is not easy to park at. Um, no, it's not. Absolutely. I miserable. have a story with Tom Petty. I was at a hotel in Dallas for a work thing and the elevator door opened and there was Tom Petty. And I screamed, Tom Petty, like in his face. And he <laughs> very clearly did not want to be pointed screamed out at? and screamed at in front of the whole hotel. <laughs> and he just hung his head and walked away from me. And then he, and that was the, that's it. I'll well, never see him again. that's disappointing. That was, that was sad. Um, what would you like your epitaph to say? Hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's that's like a deep one. Yeah. All right, it do, can be. Do you have one? Do you have yours? Oh, gosh. I had it at some point. I can't remember what it was. Who had a good one? Christine Taylor, I think, had a good one, right? No, or was her, it Sean? Sean had a really good one. Uh, if I could tell you what it was, I, I would. Gosh, I know. There have been some we've funny had one. some really like, maybe, funny ones. Maybe they have good ones that I can steal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have one? <sighs> There's been a few like she lived, she laughed, she loved, you know. Yeah, yeah no, I think I that was Christine. Maybe that was Christine. Yeah, something like that. I, um, that, that would not be me. Yeah, no, it's gotta be something like funny, like. Yeah, no, it would. It would definitely be here. Irreverent. She lies, fearless, ready to haunt you. Yeah, it would definitely. When my grandmother died, she was so funny and just like unintentionally funny, but. Uh, and she had this like New York accent and I said that her tombstone should say, my mom did not agree to this, but I said her tombstone should say, excuse me for living. <laughs> and <laughs> that's she, brilliant. And, that is really and good. They, they wouldn't do it. It's like a, like a Jewish ceremony yeah, that, so that like that, that would not fly. Like, you excuse know? me for living. Yeah. Let's just excuse make that yours for right for now. Living. Just for fun. She, right. I'll, I'll do that. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> I, she said it once and we we still laugh about it. I was like wearing like sandals or something. And she was like, I like your sandals. And I was like, oh, they're Givenchy. And she goes, oh, excuse me for living. <laughs> and so I was like, you just need to put it on her tombstone. I love that. There's a, someone, there's a joke that says that you should give one person your phone when you die, like that it goes to yeah, them. Yeah, that assigned friend mm, to go but, through everything. Well, but that, no, no, no. But then at your funeral, have them text everyone something like, thanks for coming to my funeral <laughs> from your phone number. One last like thing. One so everybody last gets one text. Send off. off. Yeah. There is that video of the man who had them play like a recording that sounded like he was trying to get out of the box. Oh, yeah. At that's his funeral. Sick. That is sick. That's it's sick. kind of hilarious. That's, I would be very disturbed. Well, I'm going to know whether to laugh I'm going to take, cry. excuse me for living. That's oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Mine. All right, we have some this or that's for you. Okay, oh. I love a this or that, and they're good girly ones. Too. They're they're yeah, they're just okay. so like, rose or froze. Um, froze. Read the book or watch the movie. Read the book. Drive or be driven. I actually kind of like to drive. 
I love to drive. I am a passenger person. I will not be driven. Brunch or happy hour? Happy hour. <laughs> Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify. There you nice. Go. Okay, and one other thing. Do you have your phone near you or no? It's oh, in my bag. Do you want me to get you, it? Or on your, on your watch, can you see how many un, uh, unanswered emails you have? Um, I know already. I have. Well, I have two inboxes. My Gmail, I have two unread, and I'm keeping them unread because it's like I have to, yeah, you have to answer them. them. And my work email, I have seven. <sighs> She's my peeps. Except it's, that I have right I now. I expected this from her. Her job is organized. That's true. She like is her an life is organized. Thank God. And the, un- but you never know because behind the scenes. That's true. Like, let me ask you this: Is this weird that people? I did have an organizer once come over to my house, and I have clutter on the countertops because I'm always trying to organize the piles and figure out where everything mm-hmm. goes. But when you open up my cabinets, they're all very organized. The problem is there's no space in the cabinets for the stuff on the because I haven't figured out where those things go. It sounds like your purse conundrum again. It's like yeah, it's, like I want pockets. Yeah, you are. But I don't you have are a enough pockets. pocket pile person. I need spaces for everything. We call them but doom I, piles. It's because she refuses to accept that she's ADHD. Mm. One Adderall would change your OCD. life, lady. <laughs> Ace OCD. No, I think that first of all, piles are my actual nightmare. I I don't allow like Clea is never allowed to anything over. on my counters. I don't even allow a paper towel holder. Oh my to gosh, be on you my can't counters. come over my house. <laughs> all hangouts are at your house. <laughs> yeah, not, but I. I, I I think I keep my house pretty neat compared to a lot of people I know. My but house is, I will say, it's insane. Like, n- not nary a thing. Like, every everything has to be put away. But do you get rid of a lot? Because I'm yes. a little bit, I'm borderline hoarder. No, I get I get rid of How do you do that lot. with kids, though? Um, Are you just trained them? It's easy. I take them things away. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if they want something new, they have to. See, my kids have prime oh, bottle oh. collections and Mr. Beast wrapper collections. So that's, and that's my son. But but they all reptile have to go. collections. And so they have a place for those. Everything has to have a place. If it doesn't have a place, it can't live in the house. See, that's my problem is everything wow. has to have a place, but I can't get rid of the things I need to find. Like the things I have to handle, I have to keep out. Can we do that mob swap them. thing? Where you can come in and train all of my hoarders? Yes, yes. Because I would be, I'm happy. I you know, get rid of I am anything. A, I'm. It's glorious. I day. did a hoarder movie last year, a and I was like, is my favorite thing. But the oh, not me, because I also hate waste, and I'm like so weird about. But if you that donate kind of it, yeah, it's like it yeah. has a second life. I, I know. Here's I know. here's what I my feeling is, and I I preach this, but I live it. It, it does not do the item any good you're not servicing yourself or the item by holding on to something that you don't need use or love if you what if someone gave it to you and you feel bad giving it away because it was a gift let, okay. let it have another life it, it deserves better it deserves better than someone who doesn't love it okay okay any, is this the, like any, if it like, doesn't give you joy tea towel or dish towel with, like words on it that yeah. your mother-in-law <laughs> gave you just get rid of it like, I only no, have one never... for my husband that says, what's cooking? Good looking. Okay, but no one. no one's ever going to come and check to see if you're if you still have the candlesticks, you know? That's true. They're, you just let them no go. No one's true. ever come in and ask. I'm, I have a fear of it, but no one's ever come in and asked me like, hey, where's that thing I got you? I know, I know. But I went to my mother-in-law's house recently and she had all the things out that I had given her on the counter. I was like, did she do this on purpose? She did it on purpose. She totally did it on purpose. 100%. Yeah. She purpose. pulls them out when you come to yes. town. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, my kids, they have the same rule. They have to live by it. Everything has to have a home, and it has to go away at the end yeah. of the night. So, you know, I got, like, even a floor basket. My kids are sentimental about some stuffed animals still. Mm-hmm. And they have to live in that basket. If yeah. they yeah. exceed that basket, that's the designated space. I'm pretty good about it. I feel like I still have a little ways to go. Mainly with like paperwork I have to go through. It's like all mail, paperwork, stuff that I have. Like, I hate paper. My torn, oh, my pocket purse, you know what by we the way, do? ripped. I have to bring it to a shoe. We place. should let her see Logan's office after this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I I mean, when I tell you, like, I then you'll live know what I'm minimally. Working with. I got rid of my wedding photos. I was like, they're digi- I digitize them. I don't I don't need these. I tried to digitize mine and I lost the digital copies, so I still have to stick with the negatives. <laughs> I am just like I I can't with things. There is not one photo in my entire house of my family. What? No, no kids, no no us. Oh, I'm afraid to have you at my house and I think you would hate it. <laughs> I am like I I just I don't know. It's it's just your sentiment is not in things. It I have a few, a few very sentimental things. Oh, I have everything. I have a, a honey pot. This is when I was doing this hoarder movie. I literally told people I'm like, there's a difference between a collector and a hoarder, and it's just yes. how much space you have. And my like I and my biggest <laughs> example is I have this honey pot that's from my uncle's house. He passed away like 15 years ago. But 
the crazy thing is like I never saw that honey pot in his house. I've never like been there. It wasn't a sentimental thing. I didn't use it or see it or it doesn't. But I'm afraid if I get rid of it, I'll never think of him again. Because when I walk by, I think of him. He's well, then that's special. I mean, again, we have rules for how we get rid of things. And again, you need to need it, use it or love it. If something's special and sentimental, you know, and love it can also mean special. Yeah. You know, it doesn't okay. it doesn't mean that you have to like act I have a lot like, of special things. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I I would challenge you to really go through those things and make a conscious decision about whether they're really special. See, you know, I did when I moved here. But when I moved here, I got this room with these giant shelves and they needed to be filled. No, they do not. And <laughs> they okay, do not. You can That's show me how to do for. That's what books are for. Well, the books are taken over too. It's that's not pretty. Books. I have love books, books piling up everywhere. I like, love books. They're I overflowing. I've actually filled the coffee table with them. I was like, we got to get rid of some. But again, so what? We just moved into a new house. We built it for the last two years. It's a nightmare. Don't suggest. Don't ever do it. Um, <laughs> it's so terrible. But we built our new house, and when we moved, I, I mean, I'm also a serial mover. I have to say, oh, we've lived in Nashville my for too. nine years, and this is our fifth house. Okay. So, oh yeah. wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. But this is it. I promise. I. Because I'm not building well, you again. Built it. <laughs> I'm not, I cannot do this again. So uh, no, I'm staying. This here. is forever. This is forever. I'm being carried out in a box <laughs> out of this house. But I went through every single item, every drawer, every shelf. I even went through my own sentimental boxes and was like, "That's not that sentimental anymore." <laughs> like I and I literally got I rid lived- of my own sentimental things. Wow. And I got rid of books. And again, you can donate all these. Yes. So, I, I just I needed to only have what I wanted to display, what I wanted yeah. to keep. And my rule with sentimental items too, again, you have to honor the item. It's not in a pile somewhere. Yeah. You have to honor the item. You either display it my or piles you store it. are really only paperwork that have to be done. That's what my piles are. Or magazines to look through. No. Like you, my piles are not magazines can go. Yeah, I know, but I but there's a few I like to look at. Okay, but like, but then like, look at them. Like Cheekwood. I want to know what's going on at Cheekwood. Do you really? There's there's you could walk across right the street. The tulips. I want to go the see tulips the tulips. There. But I need to know what the There's hours. a billboard on Harding. Okay. It's, it, there are tulips now. You don't, Cheekwood, for anyone who doesn't know, is like a garden. What do you, yeah, mansion, garden. See, yeah. I'm It was the art. Coffee Maxwell House Mansion. Yes. That's what it was? Yes. It was the Maxwell House Mansion. They donated their home, which is the museum. And then oh. their amazing gardens and And they and do land. such fun. I love their events there. I love Cheekwood. Yeah. Oh, we'll meet there. We'll meet there and have a coffee. Okay, and then that's what we'll do. I'm not inviting you to my house now. <laughs> okay, I love to go on walks in Cheekwood. Oh, Cheekwood's a great walk. I'll do that. Place. Yeah, it's very fun. Oh, I would love that. You come with your little coffee and yes. we do a walk. Oh, let's do that. Yeah, it's so it's great. Well, thank you for being here. This oh was so wonderful, thank so fun. Thank you for having me. I'm yeah. so honored. And now we're all best friends and we're going to go take a walk Yay. at Cheekwood. Yeah, we're going to go meet at Cheekwood. And just say things like, and then uh, excuse me for being alive. Percy Warner, yeah, she makes you me for living. Excuse me for living. Oh, the stairs. I live next to the stairs. I will never. Stairs. You will never see me on those. I'll go steps. run up and she down those stairs. Talk about peer pressure. But it's weird. They don't look that intimidating. And then you get up there, you're like, Ugh. oh, they look pretty intimidating. I will, if I am run, if I tell you I'm running on the or going walking on the Bellmead steps, I have been kidnapped. That is my kidnap code, <laughs> which I also, do you guys have kidnap codes? No, no, but I love it. Oh, that's what you text your friend if you've been kidnapped. Mine's going to be, excuse me for living. Excuse me for living. Mine is, uh, I'm on the Bellmead stairs right now. And then you know that I've been taken. <laughs> Mine is, my inbox is empty. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You know what mine is for real? If I ever text any of you with the number two instead of T O, I've been kidnapped. Oh. I oh. or the letter U. Okay. Like is that just a pet peeve. It's what what time are you saving? What you can't <laughs> you can't type two I would letters and agree with this. You, take, you can't gotta, gotta go to shift and then get yeah, the, like, the number. What yeah. in the world? What time are you saving? None of us are doing no. like the QWERTY keyboard anymore. And no, like, not why, anymore. Y O U. Like you can't do that. You yeah. know. No, no. I, I know. I've gone to, I can't even, I won't even uh, shorten Christmas anymore to the uh, X. I won't, I won't like, either. Capital C, Christmas. Yeah. I am neurotic about that stuff. Like every contact the in, stuff. yes. Oh, I'm crazy. I'm a, totally are you going to correct crazy. my like your and your? I, if I always do. <laughs> my husband I does so it. I'm like, appreciate Dude. when people do that actually. But my husband does it and I'm like, you know, I was in a hurry and I was just like, uh, are, uh, are your get, you're getting the kids or, and he'll, I'll write the wrong your and he's like, oh, excuse me. Um, I grew up that way. My mom is a nutso about all this. And so I, one, one time John got the cover, his photo was the cover of Vanity Fair and it was amazing. Oh no! And I sent in all caps, I sent the picture of the magazine to my mom and I said, John's photo made the cover. And she wrote back John apostrophe S. Oh no. Yeah. 
I, I was like, I thought yeah. you were going to say there was like a grammatical no, error on the like, cover. I, I can't, oh, like, no. I can't, a, I can't be happy in, in a rush and just yeah. all caps. Yeah. No. Yeah. John, John Apostle. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Thank and you. this is so fun. And we'll, so we'll fun. oh my gosh, yeah, we'll, we have like bonus content, I think, now. So this is I amazing. Can't wait to hear Stella's phone call. Yes. <laughs> we'll cut that out. <laughs> no, you can leave it. I think <laughs> it's hilarious. I think it's hilarious. I think every mom who listens to this is going to be like, yep, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, and now I know how, gr- how quickly girls like go from <laughs> mad to crying because my kids don't really get to that. They just, it's screaming and yelling until they hang up. But. Oh, it's, and what better way to describe a 13 year old girl? Oh, it was yeah. perfect. Right here. Perfect. Yeah. That, that is just <laughs> screaming at me about a math tutor. Womanette, what? Womanette, bitch.